The Atom 500 was, to put it mildly, a spectacular design. Its sleek, futuristic appearance captivated the imagination of everyone who saw it. But why did such a brilliant design end in utter failure? Rick Adams, an experienced pilot and IT business owner, saw a need for a high-performance aircraft with ample cabin space. A single engine wouldn't provide sufficient power for the spacious cabin he envisioned, and traditional twin engines demanded advanced flying skills. His solution? A centerline thrust arrangement. The Cessna Skymaster had pioneered this thrust method, but it hadn't gained as much traction as Cessna had hoped due to a market flooded with other twin aircraft. By the year 2000, however, both the Skymaster and other cabin-class twins were aging, and Rick saw an opportunity to reintroduce the center thrust concept. To bring his centerline thrust vision to life, Rick hired none other than the legendary Burt Rutan. Rick insisted the aircraft resemble a jet, even if it ran on piston engines. The plane, which would later become the Atom 500, began as a Rutan scaled composites prototype called the M309 Carbon Arrow, named because it was Burt's 309th design. This cutting edge twin pushed the boundaries in performance, technology, and luxury. Although the push-pull concept wasn't novel, the 309 used the latest in composite technology. Following a remarkably short two-year development, the 309 took its maiden flight in 2002. Rutan's brief had been to design a concept aircraft, not the final product. And in that regard, the 309 was a success, but commercializing the 309 was a different challenge altogether. Rick Adams then took over the project, rebranding it the Atom 500. While the 309 was relatively basic, the Atom was enhanced with features like air stair doors, top class avionics, and a more spacious cabin. All of these while maintaining the centerline safety of the Cessna Skymaster, but with the luxury of a pressurized cabin and upscale amenities. The A500 structure was predominantly carbon fiber epoxy composite with a Nomex honeycomb core. The Ford engine's turbochargers powered the cabin pressurization, while the rear engine powered the air conditioning. The A500's presence on the tarmac was striking. This large aircraft sat high off the ground, with a wing a foot longer than Piper's Malibu and Meridian. Its Hartzell propellers were sharply swept, lending the plane a formidable appearance on the ground. The cabin was wider than the Baron's by a foot and longer by nine inches. Two Continental TSIO 550s, equipped with intercooling, rounded out the design. Unlike the Skymaster, notorious for its rear engine overheating issues, the 500 had no such problems. As a shrewd entrepreneur, Rick Adams vigorously marketed the Adam 500. In a brilliant product placement move, the 500 was showcased in the 2006 remake of Miami Vice. Never mind the movie was a flop. But as promising as the Atom 500 appeared, internal issues began plaguing the company. Rick and his company faced immense pressure to launch the aircraft in the market, a significant challenge since the 309 prototype was just a rough concept. They were racing against time to present the Atom 500 at the Oshkosh Air Venture, regardless of its readiness. Reports emerged about the Atom 500's subpar workmanship a result of Adam pushing his team to expedite the production process. Several test pilots reported poor handling, and numerous quick fixes were applied to achieve certification, following a lengthy dispute with the FAA, who was reluctant to approve the aircraft. Consequently, the Adam 500 weighed at least 1,000 pounds more than its initial projection. Fully fueled, it could not accommodate any passengers, or pilots. Still, seven units managed to roll off the production line, all exceeding their weight limits, restricting payload capacity, and priced at $1.25 million in 2007. In an unexpected turn, the design was sold to Russian owners, who chose to discontinue the Piston 500 in favor of the new Atom 700 light jet. This jet then fell victim to the 2008 recession. These people now owned a gorgeous, brand new twin piston aircraft, but in reality it was nothing more than a 6,000 pound paperweight, as the aircraft was not certified to fly. 
All in all, a very sad ending for a twin-engine aircraft that, despite its significant flaws, looks absolutely stunning.